Sure, but like there's a lightness of being that comes with laughter. I mean, I've gotten sure, to, like as you know, I spent the day with, with Elon today. He just gave me this burnt hair. Do you know what this is? I have no idea. I'm sure there's actually there's it should be a, a Huberman Lab episode on this. It's a cologne that's burnt hair, I see. and it's like supposedly a really intense smell, and it is. Give me a smell, please. It's so, not going to leave your nose. That's okay. Well, that's okay. I'll take a gentle. I'll whiff it as if I were whiffing a to chemical in the spray lab. it on yourself because I don't know if you can. Sp so I'm reading an amazing book. Yeah, called An Immense World by Ed Young. He won a Pulitzer for uh, We Contain Multitudes or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think is the title of the other book. Um, and the first chapter is all about olfaction and the incredible power that olfaction has. That smells terrible. I don't and even, it doesn't I don't even, leave you. Ah, for, the, for those listening, it doesn't quite smell terrible. It's just intense and it stays with you. This, this to me represents like just laughing at the absurdity of it all. So it's I have to ask, so you, you were rolling jujitsu? Yeah, we're training yeah. jujitsu, yeah. So is and that then, fight between um, Elon and, and Azuk actually gonna happen? I think Elon is a huge believer of this idea of, uh, the most entertaining outcome is the most likely. And he almost, like, there is almost the sense that there's n not a free will and the universe has a kind of deterministic gravitational field pulling towards the most fun. And he's just the player in that game. So from that perspective, I think it seems like something like that is inevitable. Like a, like a little scrap in the parking lot of uh, Facebook or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Sorry, it, Meta. Yeah. But it looks like they're they're training for real. And Zuck has competed, right, in mm -hmm. jiu-jitsu. So um, I think he is approaching it as a sport. Yeah. Elon is approaching it as a spectacle. And I mean, the way he talks about it, he's a huge fan of history. He talks about all the warriors that have fought throughout history. If you look, he wants to really do it at the Coliseum. And, you know, the Coliseum is... For 400 years, I was, there's so many, so much great writing about this. Um, I think over 400,000 people have died in the Coliseum, gladiators. So this is this historic place that sheds so much blood, so much fear, so much anticipation of battle, all of this. So he loves this kind of spectacle mm -hmm. and also the, uh, the meme of it, the hilarious absurdity of it, the two tech CEOs battling it out on sand in a place where gladiators fought to the death and then bears and lions ate prisoners as part of the execution process. Well, it's also gonna be an instance where uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk exchange bodily fluids. They bleed, this is one of the things about fighting, you know? I think it was in um, that book, it's a great book, uh, Fighter's Heart, mm -hmm. where he talks about, you know, sort of the intimacy of of sparring. I, have, I only rolled jujitsu with you once, but there was a period of time where I boxed and um, which I don't recommend. Um, I got hit, I hit some guys and I definitely got hit back. Um, I'd spar on Wednesday nights when I lived on San Diego. Um, and um, you know, when you spar with somebody, even if they hurt you, especially if they hurt you, you know, you see that person afterwards and there's a, there's an intimacy, right? You're, ex it was, it was in that book fighter's heart where he explains, you know, you're exchanging bodily fluids with a stranger, right? And cre there's a, you're in your, primitive mind. Mm -hmm. And so there's an intimacy there that, that persists. So you go together through a process of fear, mm -hmm. anxiety, like. Yeah, when they this, get you, you nod. I mean, you watch somebody like catch somebody, if, you know, not so much in professional fighting, but if people are sparring that they, they catch you, you, you acknowledge that they caught you. Like, like he got me there. And on the flip side of that, so we trained. And then after that, we played Diablo 4. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't play video games, sorry. But it's a video game. So it's like, it's a, um, you know, pretty intense combat in the video. You're, you're fighting like demons and oh, okay. dragons. The last video game I played was Mike Tyson's Punch Out. There you go. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I met him recently. went on his podcast. You went, you went, yeah. wait. It hasn't come out yet. Oh, it hasn't come yeah. out. Okay. Yeah, I asked um, Mike, um, his kids are great. They came in, there. they're super smart kids. Goodness gracious. They ask great questions. Um Ask Mike what he did with the piece of Evander's ear that that he bit off. And did you like, remember? Yeah, he's like, get back to him. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. <laughs> he sells edibles that are in the shape of ears with a little bite out of it. Um, that. Yeah, that his his life has been incredible. He's um, uh, and I met. Yeah, he he his family. Are, you get the sense that they're really a great family. They're really. Um, Mike Tyson? Mm -hmm. That's a heck of a journey right there of a man. Yeah. 
my now friend, Tim Armstrong, like I said, lead singer from Rancy, he, he put it best. He said, you know, that Mike Tyson's life is, you know, Shakespearean mm -hmm. and, you know, down, up, down, up. And just the, the arcs of his life are just like, sort of an only in America kind of tale too, right? 